माय नेम इज डॉक्टर के सी पटेल प्रोफेसर एंड चीफ सॉइल हेल्थ स्पेशलिस्ट आनंद एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटी एंड पारोल यूनिवर्सिटी माटी माटी एग्रोमार्ट प्राइवेट लिमिटेड आनंद गुजरात इंडिया सो द टूडे ए टॉपिक ऑफ माय यूट्यूब इज रोल ऑफ कोबाल एंड सिलिकॉन इन एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्शन so first we see the cobalt cobalt in the form of vitamin b12 is required by animal and human in plants it does not appear to be required by non legumes it is essential for nitrogen fixation by rhizobium and thus it indirectly required by legumes normal concentration of cobalt in dry matter 0.02 to 0.5 ppm function of cobalt cobalt require for symbiotic and non symbiotic nitrogen fixation it is a part of vitamin b12 it improves growth transpiration and photosynthesis take parts in leg hemoglobin metabolism and ribonucleides reductase deficiency of the cobalt biological nitrogen fixation is reduced acidic highly leach sandy soil with total cobalt low most forages are good source of cobalt with range of 0.1 to 0.3 mg per kg dry matter or ppm poor drain soil can to lead to higher concentration of cobalt in herbage grown on this soils or liming soils to increase the ph above 6 will reduce the availability of cobalt and may lead to deficiency so when we are apply the oval liming and the ph is increase so when there is ph is increase about 6 it will reduce the ability of cobalt and there may be lead to the deficiency so in forage crops you can see the cobalt deficiency and when the sheep consume the fodder having the cobalt deficiency then you can see the cobalt deficiency in sheep then clinical sign of cobalt deficiency <clears throat> so poor growth rate so here you can see here without cobalt with cobalt so here poor growth rate small size and poor body condition score lethargy poor appetite so loss of appetite your straining then emaciation and death immune suppression increased risk of clostridial disease pustulosis worms etc then anemia poor quality wool with an open place might also be present so you can see here the cobalt deficiency in lamb so here the cobalt is sufficient so it is a healthy one but uh, when the cobalt is uh, deficient in forage crops then you can see the lamb having the poor growth rate and smaller size as compared to the lamb having the sufficient cobalt then silica second micronutrient in india so research on silicon has been initiated earlier the necessary for silicon fertilization to the rice crop has not been widely evaluated as in other countries production of 5 ton per hectare of grain yield of rice is estimated to remove about 230 470 kg elemental silicon from soil so depending upon soil and plant factors silicon interacts favorably with other applied nutrient and improves their agronomic performance and efficiency in terms of yield response also it improves the tolerance of rice plant to abiotic and abiotic stresses hence silicon management is essential for increasing and sustaining rice productivity so uh, rice and sugarcane crop are re more responsive to silicon crops so when we apply the when the soil deficient in silicon and when we apply the silicon then 
the rice crop production has been increased. Then function of silica. So contribute structure of cell wall. So it is a health in structures of cell wall. Contribute drought tolerance to crops. Regulate photosynthesis. Deactivate invertase enzyme activity in sugarcane, resulting in greater sucrose production. Larger amount of silica are accumulated intracellular deposit known as plant cells. Increase available phosphorus. Responsible for plant disease resistance. Factor affecting silicon availability. High oxygen content encourage silicon uptake. High water content, sorry, high water content. Encourage silicon uptake. Heavy application of nitrogen decreases silicon concentration. Liming decreases silicon uptake in plants. Then acid acidification increases silicon uptake. Iron and aluminum oxide influence uptake of silicon by plant. So silicon fertilizers, calcium silicate slag. 18 to 18.21% silico, silicon, then calcium silicate 31% silicon, then sodium metasilate 23% silicon. So it is a source of the silicon fertilizer. So silicon deficiency, international rice desiccation, rice Philippines. So here you can see the growth of the rice crop, over growth. Then silica is an important micronutrient for agriculture crop. So silicon is not only useful for computer chips, but also an important micronutrient for rice crop. Silicon is generally considered as a significant element for the growth, development, and biomass yield production plant, especially for those grown under stressful environmental conditions. Calcium oxide silicon. Addition also enhance the activities of catalyst, peroxidase, and superoxide, dismutase, and phytohormones according to stress intensity and silicon doses. The exo exogenous silicons play a key role in tolerate water deficient in antitoxicant enzyme bases, thereby improving overall development and productivity. The results suggested that sugarcane cultivar, cultivar GT42 is more tolerant to water deficit condition because of more efficient antioxidant system. Foliar spray of silicon contained fertilizer could be helpful in increasing rice yield while reducing the cadmium uptake in rice grain, which might be feasible approach in controlling cadmium entry into the human body via crops. So it is interesting that when you apply the silicon fertilizer to the rice crop, then there will be reduction of the cadmium. So it is a beneficial, otherwise the cadmium is a enter in human body via crops and it is harmful. So silicon in this way, it is not only increase the rice grain yield, <coughs> but it also helps in addition the cadmium uptake in rice grain. Then a case for silicon fertilization to improve crop yield in tropical soils. So India, China are located in tropical climate. So Mina and its cover cut 2013 reported that. Long period of intensive crop cultiva cultivation depletes the available soil silicon. Depletion of available silicon in this soil would be one of the possible limiting factor among other contributing to decline yield. So we know that the farmers are taking the intensive cropping due to ever increasing population like India and China. So depletion of available silicon in the soil could be one of the possible limiting factors among the other contributing to decline in yield. So at present, one of the reasons that the silicon is also declined in the soil. Silicon in the soil is continuously lost 
as the result of leaching process. It also has been lost due to leaching process, either water erosion or wind erosion. So subtropical and tropical soils are generally low in available silicon and will benefit from silicon fertilization. The silicon content in some region might be limited to sustainable crop production. So for sustainable crop production, silicon is very important. And for that, we have to carry out the soil analysis. And if the soil is deficient in silicon, then we should have to apply to the silicon fertilizers. And improve silicon management to increase yield and sustain crop productivity appear to be necessary in temperate as well as in tropical countries in order to address this problem of field decline or stagnation, it seems necessary to survey the silicon status of agriculturally important soil of different parts of the country and develop region-specific integrated nutrient management system that include the silicon element. So in integrated nutrient management, we have to survey the different uh, country and if they, there will be a found a deficiency then we should have to in, in integrate the silicon element in integrated nutrient management for higher crop production and sustainable crop production also. Then silicon fertilization is stepped toward cadmium free pregnant rice. So German co-worker 2021 reported that soil contamination with toxic cadmium Cadmium has become a serious global problem and pose a key hazard to environment and the health of human beings worldwide. So, due to toxic cadmium, there is a health problem to the human and it is a worldwide problem. So, the present study investigated that the effect of cholera application of three forms of silicate chemical calcium silicate, sodium silicate, and potassium silicate. And at four rate, 0 0.25%, 0 0.5%, 0 0.75%, and were concerned at tailoring stage on rice growth and the accumulation of cadmium, cadmium under cadmium stress 30 mg per kg that is premium. The results show that cadmium stress reduced the yield related traits and enlarged cadmium contained in different rice organs in short. In soot, root, and grain foliar spray of silicon reduced cadmium content by 40.3%, 50.7%, and 47%, 47.9% respectively. Foliar application of potassium silicate at the rate of 0.5% yielding stage show the best effectiveness in improving grain yield while mitigating cadmium accumulation in rice grain. So it is recommended. Nickel and his co worker, uh, sorry, Nye and Eater, his co worker, 2020 also reported that foliar spray of silicon containing fertilizer could be helpful in increasing rice yield by reducing the cadmium uptake in rice grains, which might be feasible approach in controlling cadmium entry into the human body via crops. Then, effect of silicon and sulfur fertilization on growth and yield of rice. So that experiment has been conducted at Anand Agriculture University by the Micronutrient Research Project. So Patel and his co-worker 2018, they have reported that application of 300 kg silicon per hectare and 20 kg sulfur per hectare with recommend dose of fertilizer 120-40 kilo kg NPK per hectare may result in optimum yield of grain and straw in rice. The application of silicon should ameliorate rice grain quality and thus providing available references for silicon fertilizer used in high quality rice production. Silicon application increased the rice yield by 17.15 to 25.45% in calcareous paddy soil with foliar spray being the best, while no significant yield increase was found in acidic paddy soil. So, silicon 
mediated an enhancement of heavy metal tolerance in rice at different uh, growth stages. So here you can see seeding stage, then pillaring stage, then ripening stage. Then uh, you can know that uh, about stress, heat, cold, drought, metal, salt, flooding, etc. Then biotic stress means pathogen attack, insect attack, herbivore attack, phytohormone, so all are the biotic stress. So silicon play a role in reducing the effect of abiotic. So the importance of silicon play a role in reducing the effect of abiotic as well as biotic stress like drought, salt stress, disease and insect stress on plant. Silic silicon is accumulated in cell wall and intercellular species and thus it has beneficial effect on disease infestation especially small grain. So effect of silicon on Biopolaresis or is a disease in rice. So reduction 40%. So here you can see silicon leaf. So it is a check and silicon soil. So silicon foliar content percent 0 0.9, 0 0.6 and 2.6. So silicon important in elevating biotic and abiotic stress in sugarcane. So it has been frequently reported that silicon can reduce stress caused by different abiotic factors, including drought. For example, under drought stress, silicon increases ascorbate peroxidase activity, total soluble sugar content, relative water content, and photosynthetic rates. Interaction between nitrogen and silicon rise and their effect on resistance towards the brown plant hopper, Nilbab Parvata Lugans. So, nitrogen and silicon are two important nutritional elements required for plant growth and both impact host plant resistance towards insect herbivores. The interaction between the two elements may therefore play a significant role in determining host plant resistance. Our results indicate that high level Nitrogen, fertilizer reduce silicon accumulation in rice leaves. So when we are apply the high level of nitrogen, then it will be reduction of silicon aluminum in rice leaves. And furthermore, the decrease was likely due to decrease extraction of silicon transporter OSLSI1 and OSLSI2. Additionally, bioassay revealed that high nitrogen fertilization level significantly decrease rice resistance to BPH and the opposite effect was observed when silicon was provided. So these results provide additional insight into the antagonistic interaction between silicon and nitrogen accumulation in rice and the effect on plant growth and susceptible to herbivores. <coughs> So soft droppy leaves and crumbs of rice plant leaves become called chloritic, which later become necrotic brown spot. Anti leaf become brown or pink, reduced panicle or square meter susceptible to lodging. So here you can see low silicon, high silicon. So here the grain is not formation in low silicon, and high silicon the length is greater and grain is also forming. Similarly, here also you can see low silicon, high silicon. Here high silicon growth and here low silica. So correction measure, apply calcium sulfate at the rate of 120, 200 kg per hectare or potassium silicate at the rate of 40 to 60 kg per hectare for disappearance of symptoms. So it is recommended. Then silicon elevate iron deficiency in barley by enhancing expression of strategy 2. So here you can see when we are apply this silicon, then there will be elevation of the iron deficiency.
then this plant have an abundance of silica and a lower portion this plant have a silica deficiency so the top two photos are of plant which have an abundance of silica whereas the below two plant have a silica deficiency so here you can see the greenery and here you can see the margin and yellowish color then response of sugar cane plant supplied with increasing quantities of silicon at 90 days after transplanting so here you can see a when we are apply the silicon then you can see the growth of the sugar cane crop has been increased here 0 0.8 1.6 and 3.2 so here you can see at 90 days after transplanting of the sugarcane plants then b1 should dry weight root dry weight root dry weight shoot dry weight and total dry weight of sugarcane plants supplied with increasing concentration of silicon so here you can see the increasing of all the shoot root and total dry weight due to this silicon with increasing quantities of silicon. Then A1 suit here suit and here B1 is a root development. And biomass of maize and including untreated control. So it is a untreated control and it is a silica content. Here see also you can see the lower growth of the plant of the maize here you can also say minus control plot so provision of nitrogen as ammonium rather than nitrate increase silicon uptake in sugar cane so the economic of silicon application on rice and sugar cane in florida reported that rice yield increases ranging from 4.6 to 48 percent due to silicon application have been clearly demonstrated. Reported by Savan and his co-worker 1997. So you can see the rice is increasing due to the application of the silicon ranges from 4.6 to 48 percent due to silicon application. Then sugarcane cultivated in the rice irrigated production area of the South Africa sugar industries where soil are frequently acid. So acid soil, the silicon are less available. So and, and low in plant available silicon and therefore the growth of the sugarcane is poor. Then uh, the result suggested that Sugarcane cultivar GT42 is more tolerant to water deficit condition because of more efficient antioxidant system. So, thank you very much. And if you have liked my YouTube video, then please subscribe the, my YouTube channel. Thank you very much again.